Welcome back to this video podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this recording, we'll review the key features of malabsorptive diarrhea that you need to know for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. All right, here we go. GI conditions of the boards, patients don't present with these diseases. Just letting you know, SPRU, that's what we used to call it, celiac SPRU. You guys are all celiac disease now. Anyhow, they don't present with disease, they present with symptoms, and the symptoms are diarrhea and bleeding. And look what I said, travels through the small and large bowel, hopefully not too fast, which is actually very funny because we're talking about diarrhea, but I'm the only one who thought it was funny. So look over here, this issues some more, that little mnemonic, some secretory osmotic or malabsorptive exudative and motility. That works, helps me organize things, but look at all those lines because it's such an artificial distinction. People with like Crohn's also have malabsorption, they have motility that goes with it. So it's not really pure that it's one or the other. We just did gastronomas, you know, inactivating lipase, enterocyte damage, that's malabsorptive. And so, but it's, you know, useful categories. So here are the players we're going to be covering. We're going to start over here on the malabsorptive players. And so all of them, I will say this, and this is the way it plays out on the boards, is they love to use the diarrheal syndromes, all of these, to test you on the metabolic consequences. And the metabolic consequences are the footprint that are going to lead to the diagnosis. And the vitamin deficiencies, they love fat malabsorption and the vitamins that go with them. So vitamin A, a little bit yesterday, vitamin D will cover. Vitamin K, bleeding. Vitamin E is a rare bird, steatorrhea, hemolysis, and neuropathy. And we'll try and get that covered too. Here you go, patient with poorly controlled Crohn's and has bruising, what's up with that? So is it like, oh, bleeding, is it a low platelet count? Well, patients with Crohn's have normal platelets, platelet dysfunction. Well, Crohn's have no problem with their platelets unless they're taking anti-inflammatories for the sacroiliitis, extraintestinal, right? Trick question, they weren't really bleeding, they have enodosum. Uh, coagulopathy, coagulopathy, that makes sense. Enteropathic failure. Your bile salts. Bile salts don't recirculate. You get vitamin K, fat soluble vitamin deficiency. All right, that's how they play the game. That's how you're going to play the game. Fat malabsorption check. Vitamin, water soluble vitamins, minerals deficiencies check. Nutritional deficiencies check. Then you have signs and symptoms of anemia check. It's all factored into the diarrheal syndromes. And the footprints here, I'd just like to thank Oscar. That's my brother's dog. Left these little footprints while we are at Block Island. So we're going to do this, but just remember with diarrhea, we have the infectious category too, and we kind of covered some of this stuff too, and life is good. So here we go. Let's do the malabsorptive ones. These are the players. So do be familiar. We're going to, do, we're going to finish up how to absorb fats once and for all, chylomicrons, but who doesn't love that? And we'll look at the syndromes, etc. You can see here, this is, everybody knows, the Sudan national flag. They're Sudan. Are they a bad place? Well, it should be because, look, they're making everyone have fat in their stool. So Sudan black, Sudan red, stains, when they tell you that, we got fat in the stool, and that means something. So here we go. Fat malabsorption. It's smelly, the nose. It's greasy. Grease, get it? And it floats, the love boat. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, here are the players. Liver failure, bile, check, terminal ileum. Oh, here, we're losing the enterocyte and the pancreas. That's what we're going to cover here. And we know about the fat soluble vitamins. Um, remember simple myceles, fat globules. What do we need? need, lipase from the pancreas, bile salts, and now really what we're going to be talking about is the enterocyte. This is the first time now we're talking about enterocyte failure presenting with malabsorption. Did that, did that, here's the enterocyte, and again, loss of villi, loss of function, loss of number, that's what we're going to cover. Here, this is Whipple's, that's PAS positive, wheat, gluten sensitivity, and who doesn't love Giardia? All righty, when you lose macrovilli, when you lose villi and macrovilli, what's the consequence? And if you just look at this, the capsule endoscopy on one of my patients, look at those villi, they're just gorgeous little fluffy things, like little pets, I, I love those, and this guy has no villi, got no villi, what's going to happen? You're going to malabsorb. So here's one of those stupid things I do, what do you need to know about? celiac disease. The, the characteristic, you know, what type of diarrhea is it? Are there leukocytes in the stool? What's a protein versus antigen? Gluten or gliadin? I put them in order, by the way. Antibodies, what's the role? What does it look like macroscopically? Where is it? What does it look microscopically? How is it going to present? What are the associated conditions? Any complications? Then we get the hell out of here. The other question I'm going to ask you before we go forward, we know that celiac disease is an inflammatory disease. The only way you guys are going to screw yourself up on this one is on the stool leukocytes. Um, patient with celiac disease, I get a stool specimen, because I don't know, they're coming with diarrhea. Get a stool specimen, we send it for fecal leukocytes. Yay or nay? Nay, right. It's an inflammatory disease, but that's in the, the submucosa. It's not in the stool. So congratulations. You just won.
So we know it's steatorrhea, non-inflammatory stool, um, gluten versus gliadin will cover. The antibody, again, it is not pathogenic. It's present as a marker, but in itself the role is uncertain, probably not pathogenic. Lymphocytes are. Blunting of the villi. Just so you should know, it's in the duodenum or jejunum. It can even be in the ileum. So don't think if they give you a biopsy of the jejunum that celiac is out of the question. It's pretty much anywhere in the small intestine. And we know about flattened villi, lymphocytes are present, all kinds of malabsorptions, and everybody knows about dermatitis or pediformis. Booyah. Um, we are good. All righty. So this is just from Robbins. Uh, but if you look at it, start up top. Gluten is the uh, protein. Gliadin is the antigenic fraction. It's absorbed across the epithelium, and then it goes through this transglutaminase process where it gets deamidated, right? So now it's like a little naked gliadin uncoated. So now the first thing is you have the antigen pre presenting cell, so you have to have this genetic predisposition. So a genetic predisposition, you're presenting it to your lymphocyte T cells, so lymphocytic infiltrate is present. The lymphocytes stimulate B cells, so B cells are going to make antibodies. There's going to be markers. They may or may not have or pathologic role in the pathogenesis of disease. So either way, I mean, we have T cells, B cells, autoimmunity, ultimately blunting of the villi. Key thing, again, genetic susceptibility. That's fine on a macro and micro level for this disease. Celiac, autoimmune, genetically susceptible, check. Antibodies, check. Uh, associated autoimmune disease, dermatitis or pediformis is the big player, so we'll talk about that. And almost every celiac disease question is diarrhea, so they have some malabsorption plus a pruritic vesicular rash. And I'm going to say that 20 times, that's celiac disease. And interestingly, in the QBanks, people do really good with celiac disease. Only so many ways to come after you. Here's just pathogenesis, deaminates, gliadin, negatively charged peptides, phagocytized, and presented um, major histocompatibility, DQ2 and 8. And the CD4 cells produce cytokines. And whenever they make cytokines, gamma interferon or TNF, bad things are going to happen. It's going to destroy tissue, okay, in genetically susceptible patients. Good. Presentation, again, rash, mineral deficiencies. That's something going to do it in that patient with diarrhea. They, like, never give you the antibody. They may ask you what test to order in this patient they're setting you up for. Well, you can order the antibody. I don't see much on that particular test. Be familiar, villus atrophy, lymphocytic infiltrate, etc., malabsorption, diarrhea, vesicular rash, celiac disease. Good. Where are we? Biopsy of the jejunum. Don't get thrown off by that. Flattened villi. And the bottom line is this atrophy causes enterocyte failure, and that's what accounts for the malabsorption. You just don't have surface area to absorb nutrients. Dermatitis herpetiformis. This is great, and it's not like herpes-like. It looks like herpes. These little vesicles, that's great. It's extremely pruritic. That's big common in patients with celiac disease. So if I have a patient with celiac disease, they're coming in itching, what does that tell me about compliance with diet? They're not really doing good. And just be familiar, again, with the idea of IgA deposits, unaffected subepidermal membrane. They're not going to ask you that. But IgA from the gut, that's a good association. So the problem is they'll tell you about this thing, and just clinically to let you know, again, you never see the rash because they're so itchy. They're always excoriated. Um, just, and I say this just, again, underscore the idea that this is a very pruritic rash. That's it, celiac disease. They, you guys are really good on that. I don't see anybody doing poorly in the Q-banks on celiac disease. I kind of cut out the fat there, which is actually very funny. It's malabsorption. All right, Whipple's, um, not much there, multi-system. The key thing here is they're going to do, it's going to be multi-system. It's going to be an older white guy. They are going to have joint involvement and lymph nodes. So you've got an old guy with steatorrhea, he's crazy, he's got some lymph nodes and his joints hurt. That's going to be Whipple's. But that's still not going to be good enough. They've got to give you more than that. And what are they going to give you? They have to give you these damn macrophages. They may describe that and say, look, you went for endoscopy, what did they find? PAS positive macrophages. These macrophages are just chock full of organisms, and that's the basis of the diarrhea. So you never see the bug. You have to see PCR electron microscopy. So it's not visible. So what do you see on light microscopy? Or the PAS positive uh, macrophages. Villus blunting. 
And so it destroys both the villi, but it also, these things are so full in that, I mean, literally, it's just chock full of organism. It also blocks the lymphatics. You literally can't even absorb fats. So that's the basis of the diarrhea, steatorrhea in patients with Whipple's. It would be a miracle if you see a, a, a question on this. There's just so few and far between. But the key thing to know is if they describe it, the one other issue, right, intracellular on electron microscopy, intracellular, since it's intracellular, it's not inflammatory if they should ask. But one other question, they can describe it, get you to the PAS positive macrophage, and then say, what the hell are you going to do about it, hot shot? And the answer is you're going to give an antibiotic. Okay, and it's an extended course of antibiotic, tetracycline or sulfa, for like a year. But there's not too many ways to go with this, so we don't see a lot of Whipple questions. These, we see a lot of questions. St. Petersburg, the Venice of the North. Giardia is big in Russia and St. Petersburg, but it has to do with water. It's the water level there. All right, we got another challenge for you. So, Giardia, is it an invasive organism, i.e. fecal leukocytes? What is it going to do to the villus border? Well, we already know we're losing villus border today. How are they going to describe where you're picking it up? There is an immunodeficiency state that causes chronic giardiasis. Manifestations, kill it, and then we're done. So giardia is beautiful, and you want giardia. They're going to show a picture like that, and it's very kind of black and white. There's only so many ways they can come after you for giardia. When I said you want giardia, I meant giardia questions. Okay, so it's not invasive, and the reason I use this picture, besides that it's adorable, it just underscores this guy's got like a little sucker, and he just holds on to the intestinal lining, the epithelium. So he holds on for dear life, and it invokes an inflammatory response. So again, the biopsy will show inflammation, villus blunting, but you don't get fecal leukocytes. And they do like fecal leukocytes in terms of lining up their ducts for the diarrheal illnesses. These patients, anybody who goes to Colorado and is hiking in Colorado has Giardia. If you're hiking in New England, you have Lyme disease. And the immunodeficiency state, well, what's the antibody that is associated with the GI lymphatics? It's IgA, secretory IgA. So people with IgA deficiency get chronic giardiasis, and they like that. So you're going to see the photo. This is a trophozoite. This one you won't see. And, you know, hiker gets diarrhea. You can know it's giardia, but they're going to ask some other derangement. What's the problem? What are you going to see on biopsy? Disrupted villi. Or why are they having diarrhea? Disrupted villi. Lack of inflammatory cells in the stool. That's big. The guy has chronic giardiasis, IgA deficiency. Those are the kinds of things they do with giardia. Now, they're getting wise because they know you know what the trophozoite looks like. So now they're starting to just show the cysts. And the cysts are actually how you get sick. That's what, when you drink that water, the stagnant, it's the cyst you're consuming. So be familiar with what it looks like, the potassium iodide stain. Young patient with current diarrhea, stool specimen reveals the following. What hum humoral deficiency allows this to perpetuate? IgA deficiency. Booyah. How are you going to kill it? Is metronidazole. You all got that in the review session. Everybody knows that. All right, so there's your malabsorption. When you lose microvilli, right, that's celiac, giardia, and whipples. Those are the malabsorptive ones you need to know. And what is this? This is, I'm just going to buzz through pancreas and get to a question, because we've already really done this. So pancreatic exocrine insufficiency, failure of lipase, failure of bicarb. Calcification, alcoholic opacities in the mid-epigastrium. We talked about all this. Diagnostic studies for those patients, we already talked about the secretin stimulation test. I can do that again if you want to. If you're worrying about a patient with a diarrhea and you're worrying about pancreatic insufficiency, really the first test, again, is you have to look for triglycerides, fats, in the stool. So you can get quantitative, a 72-hour stool collection, no one likes that, but qualitative. You just get a sample, send it to the lab, and look for fat globules. That works. If that's positive, you can do the 72-hour collection or start figuring out why they have malabsorption and work them up from there. Please work on this cockamamie question for a moment. It is low quality, but the teaching points are spot on. All right, toss something in there. This was a really good question, and I'm glad you all liked it. Thank you. What do we have here? 12-year-old recurrent respiratory infections, acid vest, deferens, chronic diarrhea. First of all, what, what's the diagnosis here? Yeah, he's got cystic fibrosis, so that's the easy part. That's what they do with cystic fibrosis. And then they give you a symptom, foot tingling. All right, what the hell is this? Physical is abnormal vibratory. So we have a neuropathy, so clearly neuropathy, appropriate labs are ordered. And for neuropathy, so he doesn't have diabetes, he doesn't have uh, Lyme disease, got a little anemia, haptoglobin is low. We'll talk about that in a normal MCV. What's causing this? When you see a low haptoglobin, what does that tell you about the patient? Low haptoglobin only means one thing. What? It's hemolysis. 
right? It is hemolysis. So that's the only reason. That's why he has a low hematocrit, and that's why haptoglobin is needed. You needed haptoglobin to diagnose this kid. So I need something here that's going to give neuropathy, and it's going to give hemolysis. Hemolysis, not macrocytic anemia with uh, multinucleated PMNs. And again, cobalamin, that MCV is normal. Okay? You need macrocytosis for cobalamin deficiency. It was a good thought. I need hemolysis and I need neuropathy. That's vitamin E. So what I did is I used this little sneaky occasion to sneak in a vitamin E deficiency question because I already told you it's rare and you're never going to see it. But the only thing you need to know about vitamin E, these are the two things, hemolysis, neuromuscular findings. They can be motor or sensory. But they're going to come in a malabsorption case. Okay, that's what they're going to do. They're going to give you, you need that fat soluble in vitamin abnormality, and it's going to be through cystic fibrosis or equivalent. So we had fat soluble in vitamins. Vitamin D doesn't give you hemolysis and doesn't really give you neuropathy. A, hyperkeratosis, nyctalopia, that wasn't there. So cobalamin can give you neuropathy. Pancreatic insufficiency, you can get B12 deficiency, but you had to explain the hemolytic anemia as well. A terrible question. You don't have to love it, but um, it was brilliant. And that concludes this discussion of malabsorptive diarrhea for the USMLE Step 1 exam. There are many key principles buried in this topic that are very high yield at the big show. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.